We're back with our friend Jonathan McKee, and the name of his great new book is The Bullying Breakthrough, Real Help for Parents and Teachers of the Bullied Bystanders and Bullies. So, you know, one thing that you've talked about, Jonathan, is, you know, kids don't want us to get involved uh, with, you know, if they're being bullied, but Mama Bear comes out of me and I'm mm. like, I need to defend my little pup. I need to defend Ethan and Joshua. So how do we not do that? Yeah, no, it, again, you know, it's like, Earlier, you asked me, you know, well, what can we do if there's only one thing we could do? Yeah. And, and definitely the most important thing we could do is that empathetic listening. It's that, that listening to their story and saying, wow, I'm so glad you told me. Thank you for telling me. But that doesn't mean it's got to stop right there. It's like, you know, you know, every time you're like, why? I need some help. You know, right. so, no, I hear you. This must be painful. Good luck. <laughs> you know, uh, no, there, there's some things we could do as parents because... Um, but it starts with listening, and sadly, what parents usually do is they jump straight to the overreaction, yep. the freaking out, yep. this and that. But no, once we've listened and we've heard that story, there's definitely things we can do. As a matter of fact, that's why I included a whole chapter on how to talk to that principal, you yep. know, and do that and have those meetings because it is okay. There is a time where sometimes we need to go. No, enough is enough. But we can be careful as we go into that meeting and not be all emotional <laughs> and irrational, but you know, and, and, and be ready for that. Also, there's things we can do to help build our kids' self-esteem. Mm. Really what this is coming down to is our kid is feeling alone, isolated, bad about themselves. Mm. So we need to find by noticing what they're good at, noticing places where they do feel like they open up but, and, and maximize those opportunities where, man, if my kid's good at art, my kid's good at drawing, right. I want to find opportunities where they can use that art, maybe where they can even help others. Maybe, you know... It, take them to an art class or, or where they can even help younger kids with art. When they serve, mm -hmm. not only serve, but use their gifts, mm -hmm. use their abilities where they're actually, you know, praised. Wow, that's awesome. You're good at this. We want to be able to take those situations and, and expose them to, you know, basically these arenas where they feel good about themselves. Mm. So self-esteem is, is a huge part of this and making them feel good. And, you know, it's, uh, parents also sometimes will enroll them in kind of sports and stuff. And I think we've got to be careful there because sometimes, well, let me enroll my son in karate right. or wrestling, <laughs> you know, and you just drop your kid off at the door. You have no idea what's going on. Right. Inside. It might be a good situation, might be not. Some of our kids don't want to do karate. They yeah. don't want to do wrestling. So it's really finding what do they like? What do they enjoy? Where are they going to flourish? Where are they going to also maybe meet some other kids like them mm. that they could bond with? Mm. Because the research out there shows that if they have just one friend, mm. one friend, that that can make a world of difference in their life. I love your, you have 10 tools to help bullied kids. Yeah. And, you know, one is don't freak out, as you said. Yeah. Step into their world. Seek settings where they open up. Yeah. Be uh, proactive about building identity. Give them a chance to serve, as you said. Um, six, build confidence and character. Dodge danger zones, i.e. your kid is not an athlete, as you said. Teach good social skills. Teach forgiveness. Get support for yourself as a parent as well. That's key. Yeah. Get support for yourself as well. Because we sometimes feel like we're going mad. Yeah. You know, we feel like we're going insane. And so to be able to, and, and I, I had this one parent that was a, a good friend and she said, you know, I went to social media and posted, hey, I'm struggling. Can I have some prayer? Can, and she said she was so overwhelmed with support mm. there through social media. Hey, mm. social media has some it's good. good yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to gather people around us in prayer. When my son was going through it, um, I, at the time, sent out this email blast to all my friends that said, pray for us. And again, people just gathered around mm -hmm. us and asked, how's Alec? How's it going? And we actually had someone who called and said, hey, I know of a school near you. And we ended up finding a better school from him through me reaching mm -hmm. out to friends because someone had a contact. This stat just astounded me. By the end of 2017, almost every study on anxiety, depression, and teen suicide cited the, the smartphone as a key factor. Absolutely. Literally, the phone in, our, in everybody's pocket or everybody's purse was the symptom for all of these things. Yeah, and you know, like uh, Jean Twinge does a bunch of uh, research on this. She's out of, uh, in SoCal, and she wrote the book, you know, iGen, and all of her research is just amazing and eye-opening to the fact that the more time young people spend on social media, 
the more depressed they become. Mm. And that's where we just need to kind of look, because you know what, she's not alone in that research. Mm -hmm. Most every expert in the area is showing that when we're trying to bond through you know, social media and we're not getting that real face-to-face -face connection, um, it, there's a problem and there's depression and all kinds of stuff that happens. And that's why we as parents, we need to provide lots of that face-to-face -face interaction and look for arenas where our kids can have face-to-face -face interaction with peers that are like them and engage in the kind of activities they like to engage in. Let's talk about the bully because I found it interesting through your yeah. studies and through the book that some of the bullies said, I didn't realize I was a bully. Yeah. Which I find like, like how did you not know when the kid that you're making fun of is leaving crying? Yeah, it, it's interesting because like, I mean, we have different, um, you know, basically, you know, we have different clubs, we have different uh, groups where kids hang out together. And if you think of sports, for example, um, in the sports world, you know, you jaw at each other, you mess with yeah. each other, you know, you, you, I mean, think of baseball. Yeah. I mean, you're supposed to, you know, yell at the batter and do this kind of stuff. Basketball so this, too. Yeah. Right? So yeah. this kind of banter and stuff almost seems acceptable, you know? And so what ends up happening is very often, sometimes some people thought, oh, I just thought it was just fun banter. Mm. I didn't realize that this kid was going home crying. Mm. So a lot of this is where we as parents, where we as teachers can help educate a little bit mm -hmm. and let you know, kids know one, they can absolutely make the difference in another kid's life. Yeah. This generation, more than any other generation, wants to make an impact. Uh, they actually care down deep. And if we can let them know and expose them to what's going on, um, that's huge. That, that's, that's why I wrote that novel, Bystanders, yeah. because I wanted people to step into the shoes of a kid that was bullied so bad that it pushed him over the tipping point. I wanted them to realize what it was like. And a lot of us just stand by because not only do we not know what to do, but um, you know, a lot of us, we don't even realize how much it's affecting this kid. Yeah. And if we can allow kids to step into the shoes of another kid and go, what's it like to be Brett? What's it like to be this kid every day? That's the first step towards them being able to make a difference. Okay, this is a must get book for all you parents out there. This, I mean, if you, if your child isn't being bullied, maybe you know of a neighbor or somebody that needs to get this book. It's called The Bullying Breakthrough, Real Help for Parents and Teachers of the Bullied, Bystanders and Bullies. And you know, maybe you're watching, and I know a lot of young kids watch, a lot of teenagers watch, and maybe you are being bullied right now. Could I encourage you to call our prayer lines? We have amazing, prayer partners that would love to pray with you. As Jonathan said, prayer is sometimes one of the biggest things as you might be going through a struggle of just trying to fit into your school or your classroom. Know that amazing people love you on that other line and they'd love to pray with you. The number's at the bottom of our screen. Stay with us. We'll be right back.